couple things I'll tell you about the table. First of all, we call it the, it's called the anatomage table, but we just call it the virtual dissection table. Um, and so what it allows us to do, it really is like a big iPad. You have a, a, a computer down at the base, and then there are two screens, one on the left and then one on the right over here, and they're merged right in the center, and we display one image all the way across. And we can operate it very much like an iPad. So if you use one finger like this, you can rotate the human body like this. You can do this with two fingers. You do the pinch and then go out like this. Um, we can also pan. And I find that most sixth graders, they figure out how to use the table in like two seconds. They're like, <laughs> they're all over it. Um, so what we have is we have uh, a data set that's in 3D. What this is is actually um, a series of photographs that have been taken of a real person. This is a real human being um, that uh, was a cadaver in Korea uh, and they froze that person when they died and what they did is they shaved them from their head all the way down to their toes and with every slice they took a picture. Um, and so what you get are individual slices, picture by picture by picture by picture by picture, all stacked up. And so it would be like taking individual slices of bread and reconstructing them and being able to see a whole loaf again. That's, that's kind of the analogy that I'll use. Um, you know, that's the same type of imagery that we, that we uh, encounter when a clinician orders a CT or a CAT scan um, or an MRI. Those are all slices, or one slice next to another, um, and so you get those individual slices, and that's typically how they're viewed. It's not typical to view it back in a, th a three-dimensional um, uh, model again. As of August, uh, in the United States, there were less than 100 tables in the, in the whole country. Um, so, um, so we're one of the few. I'm not sure. I'm sure they're selling more and more every mm -hmm. day. I'm not sure how many are out altogether at this point. I think the Medical College of Wisconsin has one. Um, but I'm not sure who else would have one so far in the state. So, yeah, we're one of the we're one of the few uh, that has a table like this, and it's it's really kind of a privilege, and it's really a testament to what uh, NWTC is committed to in, in terms of staying um, staying uh, um, active in pursuing new technology mm -hmm. and being an early adopter. Right? You can see that we're kind of so we're taking away from the front, and we're seeing uh, what's in the back. So. You know, just a few things that we can see, like those right there. Do you know what those are? Vertebrae. Yeah, those are vertebrae right there. What is this right here? Lung. Yeah, lung is right there. We've got another lung right there. Let me bring this a back different. a little bit. They do look a little different. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's go back this way. There we go. What's starting to develop right there? Heart. Yeah, that's the heart. You got it. Can you recognize that right there? Diaphragms. Well, diaphragm is right here. So diaphragm is just a thin little muscle right above. So it separates the lungs and the heart from kidney. these structures below. Uh, actually, kidneys are going to be down a little bit lower. That's the liver. So uh, I like to turn the skeletal system on sometimes, mm -hmm. and then just like the cardiovascular system. So if we did that, then we can see all of the blood vessels of the body. Uh, we can see the heart. Um, in order to see the heart, let me do this a little bit. Let me just cut away from the anterior aspect. So I'm kind of opening up the thorax here. You see how the heart's being cut there? Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit more versatility than that. I can come to the cardiovascular system and I can say no clip. And what that does, oh, I'm gonna say okay and close. That actually leaves the cardiovascular system and allows when I cut away, you see how I'm just removing bone? Mm -hmm. So I'm just seeing the cardiovascular system there and then I can bring the bone back. Sometimes it's nice to see the bones because it gives you, gives students a, uh, like a reference point, right? Um, like you can palpate or feel where your collarbones are and you can say, oh, okay, well, there's, my, there's my heart or there's my common carotid artery or external jugular vein. So it gives, um, gives a little bit of pers perspective for where the, where the structure